Okay, so we have one last issue to look at. And this is a, is a confusing thing, so we want to try and make this as clear as possible. Centripetal acceleration is the inward force that allows objects to go around a turn or to follow a curved path. It's an inward force. But many people suggest that when they go around a curve or they make a sharp turn, they feel something called a centrifugal force. And this is an outward force. And I'm sure when you've gone around a turn at a high rate of speed, you've noticed that it, it does feel like there's a force pointing outward. I think almost everybody would agree that they feel as though they're being thrown out from the from the center. They don't feel a force inward, they feel a force outward. So this brings up a, a situation that we have not yet discussed, but that is that the point of view of the observer makes a difference as far as what they see. And what we're talking about here is the difference between an inertial observer And what inertial observers, they make their observations from an inertial frame. So what does an inertial frame mean? An inertial frame is one in which the first law describes the situation. Let me remind you of the first law. The first law states that an object with no net force on it will remain with a constant velocity. That is to say that it will maintain the same speed and travel in a straight line. This refers to all objects traveling at a constant velocity, traveling at the same speed in the same direction, or objects that are at rest. Both objects are considered to be first law situations and both observers, whether they travel at a constant speed in a straight line or whether they sit at rest, would be considered to be inertial observers and they would be making their observations from an inertial frame. Now, if they're not traveling with a constant velocity or they're not at rest, then they are what we would call accelerated. And accelerated observers make their observations, as I'm sure you can anticipate, they make, of course, their observations from an accelerated, accelerated frame of reference. Now, if the inertial observers were governed by the first law, it stands to reason that the accelerated observers, that their observations would be governed by the second law. And the second law says that an acceleration will be exerted, will be felt, if a force is exerted on an object with mass. So the problem is that in the inertial frame, everything operates the same whether you're at rest or whether you're in motion as long as you maintain the same velocity, that is to say, the same speed in the same direction. Now, in the accelerated frame, all kinds of unusual things may occur. So this is a really important aspect, and especially when we start to talk about the theory of special relativity, it'll be really important to understand which frame we're making our measurements from. But even without looking at special relativity, in this situation where we look at centripetal versus centrifugal, it's really important to understand that only inertial observers only observers 
in an inertial frame of reference make correct observations. So let's take an example. Let's look at a very simple example. Let's take So let's draw a picture of each of these two people. So we'll put a person in a car and we'll put a person in a, at a table. So at the table we will have a velocity of zero. In the car we'll have a velocity. We'll have their velocity point to the right. All right, so let's draw a real simple picture of a chair where we are going to put the person they're holding their cup of coffee put the same person and they're both holding their cup of coffee. Now, nobody's going to argue that there's any problem with sitting at a table that's stationary with a cup of coffee. You can drink the cup of coffee, and you can hold the cup of coffee, and nothing's going to happen to you. Similarly, the same is true if you're sitting in a car. You can drink a cup of coffee as long as the car does not change speed. That is, in other words, to say that as long as the car is in an inertial frame, traveling at the same speed, in the same direction, you can drink the cup of coffee. This would be especially noticeable for anybody who's traveled in an airplane where, for example, the average speed of a commercial aircraft is about 550 miles an hour, but you can sit, eat, drink, do anything that you would normally do on the ground, and everything will be fine. There will be no problems with that. And that's at a very high rate of speed. So it doesn't matter what the speed is. All that matters is that the speed does not change. But now when the speed changes, or that is to say that we become an accelerated observer, when we become an accelerated observer, all kinds of weird things may occur, may seem like they happen. So let's say that in the inertial frame, and in the inertial frame, we will have a constant V, and that equals everything is fine. Over here, we have no V, and of course, everything is fine. So let's let's go ahead and create an accelerated frame. Well in the accelerated frame we might suggest that the car slows down. What happens here? When the car slows down the coffee the coffee flies forward. Now did the coffee really fly forward? No, of course the coffee didn't fly forward. What happened was you slowed down, you reduced your velocity, but the cup of coffee, which is of course trying to maintain what the first law says that all objects should do, and that is to travel at the same speed in a straight line. So it's not that the coffee flew out of your hand. Instead, it's that you slowed down and the coffee tried to continue its motion, to continue its forward motion at the same speed. And so, the observation that the coffee flew out of your hand is not really accurate. Somebody from the outside, the person sitting at the table, watching the person in the car drive by, would see that it wasn't that the coffee flew forward. It was simply that the coffee continued in its same speed, in the same direction, and the person slowed down. Now what happens if the car speeds up? Well, this is even a worse situation. In this case, the coffee the coffee flies into you. 
So where we saw that the coffee flew forward before, now the coffee flies in this direction. But is that really true? Did the coffee really fly into you? From your perspective inside the car, it would certainly seem like the coffee suddenly flew forward into you. But in reality, what happened was not that the coffee flew at you. It's actually the exact opposite. You flew into the coffee. The coffee attempted to maintain its same motion, same velocity, same speed in the same direction. And you rushed forward into it. As you rushed forward into it, it gave the perception that the coffee was flying towards you. But an observer from the outside would be able to see that actually the coffee just kept going at the same speed and you flew into it. So clearly, the person inside the car who is accelerating made bad observations. They observed strange things occurring, the coffee flying forwards, backwards, and it wasn't reality the coffee, coffee, coffee flying forward or backwards, it was the person making accelerated motion that made it seem as though strange things were going on. But when the car traveled at a constant speed, everything was fine, no problems. So this difference between the inertial observers, I'm sorry, let's add inertial over here, When the inertial observer made their observations, everything was fine. They noticed no difference between this situation and this situation. But when we accelerated, all kinds of strange things began to happen. And it wasn't because they were really happening. It was just our perception from our accelerated view. The accelerated viewer observer was not making correct observations.